Here we are, talking about putting more money back in the pockets of New Yorkers. This is a great day, my friends. You know, we've been talking about affordability all summer long. And I want to thank the leaders and the members of the legislature for being phenomenal partners in our desire to just lift the burden from hardworking New Yorkers in any way we can. So I'm grateful for the presence of our leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, thank you for your friendship, your partnership, and being a real driver of these conversations with the members of the Senate as we go forward. Also, I want to acknowledge Carl Hasty, our speaker, who was so adamant that we find the resources to put this money back that we're talking about today back in people's pockets as well. Uh, I want to thank him for everything he has done. And I'm sorry he couldn't be here today, but he certainly sends his best. And also, all the legislators who've been recognized here today, I take nothing for granted in this business. Your partnership, your willingness to roll up your sleeves and get the job done is something I'm so grateful for. So as I said, we've been talking about affordability. Started off the summer with $200 million in food assistance for 1.5 million children. Then we distributed $350 million in child tax credits to over 1 million families. And then we work together to cap the cost of child care, something I've spoken a lot about because this was personal to me when we could not find child care that was affordable when I was starting out in my career. We capped it for families earning less than $108,000 to $15 a week. That's money back in their pockets. So we've worked together, worked really hard to get all this back in people's pockets. And some other good news. Inflation is finally going down. When we were doing our budget, it was still up there and unpredictable, but it's finally plummeted down from its 40-year high down to pre-pandemic levels. And even gasoline has dropped to $2 a gallon. We didn't think we were going to see this for a long time. So but you know what? With all this backdrop and the good news from the economic front, New Yorkers still don't feel that relief yet. It takes time. It takes time to trickle down and benefit them. And I know this because I went back to school shopping in Albany last month. Not for myself. Uh, I'm good. But uh, <laughs> Melissa Anderson uh, was a young woman, a single mom, who was so grateful to the checks that we gave her just in time for that back to school shopping, went shopping with her twin sons. And to watch these kids, it was, it was actually heartbreaking because they knew that they couldn't grab the $89 backpack. They immediately gravitated to the $39 one because they knew that there would be too much for their mom. Already at age 12, they knew they could not get that extravagant backpack. And we went shopping. We bought pens and paper and notebooks and the water bottles they picked out and the lunch pails. And we get to the checkout, and she was turning to me and says, I couldn't do this without the help from the state. That, my friends, is why we do what we do. It's those voices that feel that no one ever listens to them, yet we do. We do. And it's so hard to make ends meet. And we're always working to find ways to just money back in people's pockets. So today, a continuation of this long effort, we're announcing that we're sending, sending $2.3 billion in school tax relief, the STAR program, to nearly 3 million homeowners across New York. That deserves a round of applause. Now, two-thirds of the recipients already have their checks, which is great because we wanted that in time for school. And there's a couple districts that are still looking to get them because of their timetable with their own school districts and their own finances. But this program has been around a long time, no doubt about it, but we keep ensuring that it gets bigger and bigger every year. And also for seniors on a fixed income, my gosh, life is hard. The cost of the copays every time they turn around, they're at a doctor's office, the cost of prescription drugs, maybe they want to get a little gift for the grandkids once in a while. Receiving the enhanced star and putting $1,000 back in their pockets, this makes a world of difference and helps our seniors actually enjoy their retirement just a little bit more instead of being there late at night worrying about how to pay the bills. So it goes a real long way. The groceries, I go shopping in the city. I'm stunned at the cost of toothpaste and bananas. Uh, 
I walk to them, no deliveries for me. Uh, or even just if you have a car, car payments and the insurance and everything else. So here's the other thing. Since the beginning, the checks would show up in the mail, right? Now sometimes people move and you're not always there and you know, sometimes mail gets stolen, a little bit of unreliability. We have technology finally catching up with this program. Even seniors do online banking, right? I'm a senior, I do online banking. Uh, I can speak for seniors. So we wanna meet taxpayers where they are. We wanted to make sure that the people who deserve this relief get it immediately. And so we have made sure that we have a digital portal now. This is brand new, digital portal for the first time ever. They can get their star payments by direct deposit. Direct deposit, right, at, right there, right away. Hmm. Now, as I said, many people have already received their checks for this year, but if you live on Long Island, for example, which is on a different cycle, you can still sign up for direct deposit this year. So we want to make sure that happens. Go to ny.gov slash star to get started. So everybody should do it for next year. It's available. Get that money as soon as you can. It's yours. And you can set it up on direct deposit to come day or night. So let me wrap up with this. Affordability will always be the top priority of my administration and your representatives in the legislature. We are aligned with this. No New Yorker should have to lie in bed at night and worry about these bills or make decisions of choices that they should not have to make between the groceries, the prescriptions, being laid on a payment. It's just too hard sometimes. So if we can continue finding how to give people relief, and I mentioned Long Island, I think about the fact that a recent visitor to Long Island, <laughs> just last night, was responsible for driving up the cost of living in places like Long Island and Westchester County and other areas when he obliterated the state and local tax deduction that had been there since the beginning of the tax code when President Abraham Lincoln was in office. So now it comes back here, what a hypocrite. Oh, we're going to get rid of that. You know how much Long Islanders and, Long I and Westchester residents and other New Yorkers have had to pay since the time when you ended this? It's costed individuals in these areas about $5,500 more a year that they used to be able to deduct. Over the six years, it's $33,000. It should have been in their pockets so we could finance a big tax cut for the wealthiest and really stick it to the blue states is how they defined this. So we're doing what we can, but these are changes we're going to need at the federal level. Uh, I'm not personally trusting the person who got rid of this. Uh, I'm not believing him at his word to say, oh, I'm gonna put it back. So that's up for voters to decide. This is not a political conversation, uh, but School taxes have eaten up so much of the relief, and we're just trying really hard to get people's head above water. So we're going to keep fo focusing on the STAR program. We're going to work hard to restore the state and local tax deduction, known as SALT, and make sure that we can have New Yorkers thriving once again. And with that, I'm really proud to announce someone who is a champion of these causes, has been an ally at my side. We've gone through a lot of negotiations together. I'm sure you miss it. Right now? No? Okay, we're, we're good. <laughs> okay. It's right around the corner, Leader. It's right around the corner. Uh, honored to introduce my friend and our Senate Majority Leader, Andre Stewart-Cousins, to talk about the positive impact of STAR across her district in the state of New York. Leader Cousins. Thank you so much, Governor. No, I don't actually miss it uh, <laughs> because... Um, you know, we are constantly uh, in communication, and it has been uh, a real great um, partnership. Uh, we've been able to, you know, fight a lot together, uh, along with my counterpart, Assemblyman, uh, Assembly Speaker uh, Carl Hasty, uh, for these very things. It matters that people who represent the great people of New York understand what re real people experience. And as the governor was saying, as she 
deals with her grandkids. I, too, have four, six and under, child care, daycare. So grateful for pre-K. And still, with their parents making a considerable amount, they still need help. And so when people are sitting around that table experiencing what everyday people are experiencing, the results are better. So I'm happy that we can talk about the amount of money that we continue to put back into people's pockets. In July, we were together, the governor, the speaker, myself, to tell people that they were getting a supplemental check for the Empire State Child Tax Credit. We had last year included children who, for some reason, were not included zero to four, so that added uh, more money in people's pockets for children who were younger. And then, just this July, we were able to send a supplement so that, again, if you already received that tax credit, you didn't have to do anything except go to your mailbox. And now we're talking about making it even easier to access STAR payments. And I was talking to one of my staff members on the way down, and he's like, I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about STAR. And he says, oh, I just got my payment. I said, were you happy, thrilled? Because we understand that the cost of living is difficult. We're working on it. Things are coming down. I, I credit the Biden administration and, like the governor, uh, laugh at someone who gave us this problem with our state and local taxes, saying, oh, goes, I'm going to fix it. We know that that's unlikely because, actually, I've been to the other states that are receiving our tax dollars. And those legislators are thrilled, <laughs> thrilled, a wash in our cash. So while we continue to work on getting federal partners, we in the state are committed to doing everything we can, whether it's making sure that somebody doesn't have to you know, go to their uh, assessor's office to see what's happening with STAR, that it will meet you in your bank account if that's what you want. I have a lot of seniors in Westchester, and I know uh, you know, the Assemblywoman will talk about Long Island as well as Assemblyman Levine. But the reality is they're house rich, cash poor. So this additional, in some cases, $1,000 makes all the difference in the world. And I'm here because I want to make sure that people understand that both houses of the legislature, and I see some of my senators here. I'm going to leave the assemblywoman to announce her members, but I do want to recognize Senator Leroy Comrie. I want to recognize Senator Brad Hoylman. I just want to make sure I don't get in any trouble with anybody else. <laughs> but to a person, we are committed to do what we can to meet people where they are, and not only meet them where they are, but to lift them up. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce a wonderful, wonderful champion, Assemblywoman, Assemblywoman Mickey Salages. I was going to say Mikael, but she says everybody calls me Mickey. <laughs> Assemblywoman from the 22nd District. Assemblywoman, thank you. Well. When they say, show me the money, that's what the governor and the legislature did, right? <laughs> and so we are, are proud to say that we are investing into New York. And you know our motto is Excelsior, and it's ever upwards. And we're ever upwards investing into Long Island, Westchester, to all over New York State, because no one is being forgotten. We're all working together. And so when I think of you know, America, when I think of you know, this country, I think of like apple pie, baseball, but you also think of home ownership. It's the very symbol of the American dream. And owning a home is not just about a place to live. It's about building a future. It's about creating stability. It's about investing into our communities. 
But for so many, they don't have an opportunity for home ownership. And some that do are struggling every day. And we know that our housing stock is very diverse. You know, when we talk about Long Island, we have residential homes, but we can't forget about places like Queens, Yonkers, and upstate New York, who many people have homes as well. And so that's why it's so important that we invested in STAR. And I really want to thank my speaker, Speaker Carl Hasty, and acknowledge him today, because he thinks about every single member. It's not just a focus on one area, but it's really a focus on empowering members to talk about what's important in our district. So I just want to thank our speaker. Give him a round of applause. Come on, members, yeah. We know the reality. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a high cost state. New York is very expensive to live. But we have a governor and we have a legislature that's constantly investing into programs. Whether it's the child, child care assistance, expanded child tax credit, which I got my check. I'm a mom of three. <laughs> I got it right before school shopping. I was so happy, really. Um, or our seniors investing into programs like food assistance. It's about making sure that we're taking care of each other and not dividing. And so this $2.3 billion in STAR is amazing. It's focusing really on the number one issue when we talk about Long Island. It's about property tax relief. And I can't stress that it's very expensive to live on Long Island. And I don't have a pony. I have people that have an interpretation of Long Island with wealth and all that. Not at all. Long Island is middle class communities, people working everyday jobs like in healthcare, looking to be a part of that American dream. And so that's why it's important that we invest into the places like New Rochelle, Utica, Long Island, because we need to highlight that we are being more efficient about how we use government resources. And so it's exciting that we have a portal now. Woo, whoopee. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to the legislature and governor for doing that. And I encourage homeowners to make sure that they, are applied, you, they have STAR, they applied for STAR. Because uh, you know, a couple years ago, I sent out a mailer about all the programs available to seniors. And I, I got a phone call after the mailer dropped and a young, uh, young senior, I like to call them young, young, or young or older New Yorkers called me and was like, I didn't know that I was entitled to STAR. And not even that, I was entitled to Enhanced STAR. And she started crying because now she was struggling. Like she was parsing out her prescriptions. You know, she was uh, going to the, you know, the local food pantry you know, she, she had, you know, financial issues because she's trying to balance it all. She's trying to live that American dream and try and balance it all. But having this, this check and now direct deposit, she can live a, a New York life and be able to stay here and keep people here. And that's what it's all about. So I want to acknowledge um, my colleagues who, I mean, they're so dynamic. I love all my colleagues. They're amazing. No, not all, but all the, all the colleagues. I love you all. Um, I'm going to start uh, this way. No discrimination, so don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, Assemblyman um, uh, Steve Otis. Uh, Assemblyman Charles Fall. I see Assemblymember Raga out there. Uh, who else? I see Assemblywoman uh, Tapia. Thank you. I see Assemblywoman uh, Je Jessica Gonzalez Rojas. Yeah, JGR, we always call her. Anyone else? Oh, I see uh, Assemblywoman, a dynamic Assemblywoman Chantel Jackson. And last but not least, my favorite Long Islander. Assemblymember Chuck Levine. Yes. <laughs> so we're here to build a better, stronger New Yorker, New York. We're here to build a better, stronger community. And it's just exciting that we're investing into homeowners. So thank you, Governor, and thank you to my colleagues in the legislature for doing that. So with that, I guess we're done. <laughs> Am I introducing anyone? No? Okay. <laughs> that concludes our program. Thank you for coming.